Right. I welcome members to the 18th meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and ask members to turn off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed that we take items eight and nine in private. Item eight will allow the committee to consider a draft report on the delegated powers contained within the inquiries into fatal accidents and sudden deaths, etc. Scotland Bill. And item nine relates to correspondence from the Minister for Parliamentary Business on future legislation and the role of the committee. Is the committee agreeable to take an eight and nine in private, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item two, then. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Education School Lunches Scotland Regulations 2015 draft, nor on the Registers of Scotland Voluntary Registration Amendment of Fees, etc. Order 2015 draft, nor the Water Environment and Water Services Scotland Act 2003 Modification of Part 1 Regulations 2015 draft, nor the Historic Scotland, sorry, in Scot Historic Environment Scotland Act 2014 Ancillary Provision Order 2015 draft, nor on the Scottish Public Services Ombudsman Act 2002 Amendment Order 2015 draft. However, members may wish to note that the Scottish Public Services Ombudsman Act 2002 Amendment Order 2015 is to be made before the 40 days for parliamentary scrutiny has elapsed, taking into account the summer recess which begins on the 27th of June. This order in Council adds a newly created body, ILF Scotland, to Schedule 2 to the Scottish Public Services Ombuds Act 2002. It gives the Scottish Public Services Ombudsman the power to investigate complaints made against ILF Scotland. ILF Scotland will be operational from the 1st of July 2015 and is intended that its complaints procedure will be fully operational as soon as possible thereafter. The letter from the Scottish Government accompanying the order explains that in order to ensure that the complaints procedures are fully operational as soon as possible after ILF Scotland begins service delivery, the Government's intention is for the order to be laid before Her Majesty in Council on the 15th of July 2015. Provided Her Majesty is fit to make the order, it will come into force the following day. The letter further explains that at present the dates of future Privy Council meetings are unclear and it is therefore desirable that if possible the order is laid before Her Majesty on the 15th of July. Do members have any comments, Stuart? <coughs> Thank you, Convener. On, on the substance of the order, I uh, recognise the, the, the issues around timetable and have nothing really to say. Um, I just say what I've said on one or two occasions in the past, uh, something about the construction of the order, in that uh, the substance of it is simply to insert a paragraph 25ZB, which is the two words and a footnote, uh, ILF Scotland. Um, I would much prefer for uh, good uh, drafting of law uh, that when a list is amended, the entire list is incorporated in the order. The fact that it is 25ZB uh, gives that hint uh, to the changes that have already taken place and the complexities there might be for people to determine what is on the amended list, which is in a variety of orders and original legislation. Thank you. The point is well made and not for the first time. Is the committee otherwise content with those instruments, please? Yes. Content. Thank you. Gender item three, instruments subject to negative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Rural Development Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015, 192 nor on the Rural Payments Appeal Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015, 194. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by a legal advice answers on the historic environmental... Sorry, I'm starting it. Good day. Historic Environment Scotland Act 2014, commencement number three, order. Yes. 2015, SSI 2015, 196. Is the committee content with this instrument, please? Yes. Thank you. Right, so agenda item five is the Prisoners' Control of Release Scotland Bill. The Cabinet Secretary for Justice has written to me as convener, responding to the committee's concerns on the delegated powers in the Pris Prisoners' Control of Release Scotland Bill. As you may recall, Section 3.2 of the Bill provides that Scottish Ministers may by order bring Section 1 and 2 of the Bill into force on an appointed day, and Section 3.3 provides that a commencement order may include transitional, transitory or saving provisions. The Committee raised concerns about the commencement provisions, given that transitional, transitory or saving provisions may, require, may be required, which could have a potentially significant effect on certain persons affected by the Bill. 
Committee therefore recommended that the Scottish Government bring forward an appropriate amendment at Stage 2 to make a commencement order made under Section 3.2 subject to the negative procedure where it contains transitional, transitory or saving provisions. Cabinet Secretary has since written agreeing to amend the Bill to respond to the Committee's concerns, specifically has lodged amendments putting the transitional and saving provision for the coming into force of Section 1 of the Bill on the face of the Bill, thereby allowing Parliament an opportunity to scrutinise those provisions. Does the Committee have any comments or observations? John? I would just like to say that uh, I welcome uh, the Cabinet Secretary's um, change of heart, and um, I think that is, is all to the good. I'm pleased Keep that we stuck to our guns, and I think, I think it was you who raised it in debate. Um, and thank you for, for doing so on behalf of the committee. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Do members agree to note that response? Welcome the fact that in light of the committee's report, the Sec Cabinet Secretary has lodged amendments which put the transitional provisions on the face of the bill? Yes. Great. Thank you. Agenda item six, pensions instruments. This item concerns the committee's consideration of pensions instruments and correspondence received from the Scottish Government in relation to those instruments. At its meeting on the 28th of April, the committee reported in, on the following instruments. Fire, the Firefighters Pension Schemes Amendment, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015, 141, and the Police Pension Scheme, Scotland Regulations 2015, SSI 2015, 142. In so doing, the committee raised concerns about the number of errors contained within those instruments, and with that in mind, the quality control process applied. Deputy First Minister has written to the committee responding to these concerns and has committed to correcting the errors identified the committee in the firefighter regulations. The response also makes a commitment to improve the quality control process. Uh, do members have any comments or contributions? Jim, oh, sorry, Stuart. Um, well, I, I welcome the fact that the Deputy First Minister appears to share our concerns and is responding in an appropriate way. Um, I think that will encourage the committee to continue uh, with uh, its desire for perfection rather than the uh, disorder of this particular, uh, a, 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 this particular set of regulations. I would just to endorse what um, Stuart Stevenson has said and, and welcome uh, the First Minister's acknowledgement of our concerns which were... Um, raised with no other objective in mind other than that we want uh, the absolutely best quality drafting to be the way that all the instruments are constructed and manifestly this was not the case. Indeed. Thank you very much. Um, that takes us to agenda item 7, Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010 Part 2 Extension Order 2015. The committee at its meeting on the 12th of May raised concerns about the absence of consultation on the Public Services Reform Scotland Act 2010 Part 2 Extension Order 2015. The order was drawn to the Parliament's attention under the general reporting ground. The Committee was not satisfied with the justification offered by the Scottish Government for not having consulted and consequently agreed to write to the Deputy First Minister on this matter. The Deputy First Minister has now responded to these concerns. Members have a copy of that letter. Uh, do members have any comments, please? John. Uh, yes, uh, convener, thanks. Um, obviously, as well as discussing it at this committee, um, I was at the Finance Committee when we discussed this with the uh, Cabinet Secretary, uh, with Deputy First Minister. And I have to say I'm not completely satisfied uh, with the arguments. They just seem to have uh, held firm to the arguments they were putting forward previously, which I don't actually think answer uh, the points that, that we were ra raising. It's specifically in his letter in paragraphs 5 and 6, um, five suggests that a consultation would not have made any difference to the order, and I accept it would not have made any difference to the a, anything internal in the order, but it might have made a difference as to whether the order came forward or not, because this was quite controversial when the legislation a, came forward in the first place, a, and I think it would have been interesting to hear what some of these outside bodies thought if they had been reassured by the last five years or if they still had a, concerns. So... I don't feel that was a strong argument against the consultation. And secondly, in paragraph 6, where it talks about other public bodies, um, in the past they have been prepared to uh, state their opinion um, on the public record, despite the fact they may well be subject to ministerial control. So again, I don't think that was a particularly good 
uh, argument against. So I, I remain unsatisfied, I have to say, although I did not vote against the uh, order at the Finance Committee. Um, I would um, agree with what John Mason has just said. I would also um, adhere to my view of last week that the government should consult where there is a precedent set that they do consult, and I am concerned about the precedent this sets for the future. Um, is the government now going to decide when it's going to consult or not? Um, notwithstanding um, the reasons provided in the letter, I think it sets an uncomfortable precedent that uh, we, the government, will now decide when we are going to consult or not, or when we are just going to say this is how it's going to be, because there is no point in consulting. That puts us on a very slippery slope. Okay, thank you for those comments, which I'm sure will be um, read by the appropriate authorities. Thank you, College. I think that completes item seven, at which point I move the meeting into private. Thank you.